Hey there, entrepreneurs. My name is Sushant and welcome to Trep Talks. This is the show where I interview successful e-commerce entrepreneurs, business executives, and thought leaders, and ask them questions about their business story and also dive deep into some of the strategies and tactics that they have used to start and grow their businesses. And today I'm so excited to welcome Travis Peterson to the show. Travis is the founder and CEO of Joker Greeting. Joker Greeting creates and sells prank greeting cards and other prank gift items. And today I'm going to ask Travis a few questions about his entrepreneurial journey and some of the strategies and tactics that he has used to start and grow his business. So thank you so much for joining me today at Trip Talks, Travis. Yeah, sure. I, I should have, I mean, I, I'm in my office. I have a lot of product, but um, no, no, I, I don't have one in front of me. I can, I can, gra I can grab some if we need to, but um, thanks for having me. But but did I describe your product correctly? Like, do you do you describe it as a prank greeting card company, or how do you describe your company? <laughs> uh, I you know, they they're they are pranks. I mean, there's nothing. There, there's definitely a joke that we are trying to obtain. But at the same time, is I've always found that you know people buy the card not always to have a prank war it's really much more just about getting a laugh you know if that's a prank it's a prank but i think it's just for me it's about relationships we just want to you know have fun and enjoy life and get a laugh from them get a laugh from me but you know i'm never none of none of what i do is a prank where only one person laughs mm. it's, really, it's, it's both people they enjoy it cool cool interesting so um i know that you've been you you started this company a few years back right and uh, and now it is doing reasonably well. Could you share a little bit about uh, what motivated you to start this business? I mean, this is quite yeah. a unique idea. Yeah, I mean, it, what motivated me was I was always kind of making stuff. And the, the funny thing is, is just from my background, <clears throat> um, I, I used to live in New York and I worked in finance. Right. So I went to school. My undergraduate was business. And um, I worked in New York in uh, one of the, it's kind of like a little boutique firm. I was there for six, seven years. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, is I, I just liked making things. And during that time, I was, you know, all in. I, I loved, I still like finance. I still love all of that. Mm -hmm. But after a while, like once I, so just to be very clear, when I got my job was when the financial crisis happened. So mm. I was hired in 2007, 2008 happened, crash happened. So I was kind of in, it was a difficult time, but I was very fortunate. I had a job, I worked and, and I enjoyed the job. It was fun. But at the same time is after so many years, it was just a question of like, do I stay or do I just want to look into something else? And as much as I would, um, and quite frankly, my job at that time, um, I would be in meetings with um, funds, like investors who would manage lots of money. And I would be in the same meeting would be a CEO or a CFO, and they would be pitching their company to be invested, you know. So I would be in all those meetings, I'd be setting them up and I just, you know, and I was on the sidelines and, you know, I, I could have stayed there uh, as a broker, uh, but I just always looked at this dynamic and I would ask myself, you know, who's really in like the position here? Is it the buyer? Because they're in a good position. So a lot of it was, I just always looked at the, the people making things. I don't know if, you know, they had the best position, but I just wanted to be there more so. Mm. And I think that was the, the ultimate, ultimate motivator. Uh, I just looked at the dynamic of where all we were sitting. I said, I just kind of want to be there. And I liked making things. And to be frank, um, <laughs> I started to make a software company mm. originally, mm. which led me to kind of going back to school, which at the time, the software company was, it was so hard to do. I, mm. I, I can go into all of that, but it's very difficult. I had a lot of um, challenges. And then Joker greeting was an idea and it was purely, purely an idea that I thought was hilarious and funny and I could make, but it was not intended to be um, a company. I mean, th this is always kind of a dilemma for any startup entrepreneur, right? Someone has an idea 
and yeah. the i mean it's it's an it's a it's a dilemma in the sense that you know if if you already have a job do you quit your job and go 100% start a business yeah. or do you keep your 9 to 5 job and do this part time so if i'm understanding correctly you chose to completely quit the job and go 100% in this uh, not not even entirely no uh, originally with a software company i think i had like I, I i won't remember exactly how much time you know it was probably six to 12 months. I honestly don't even remember because there's a, there's a, there's a difference between origination of the idea and then building it and where it is. So I, I can't really recall. It could have been six to 12 months range when I was at work and it's not nine to five. It was a lot of time, but luckily I didn't have kids or wife to really think about or worry about at the time. Um, I would do both. I was working on the software and talking to engineers and building something. And it was actually with the software business where I got it to a point where I said, I feel really good about this. And that's when I actually took off. And part of my thinking was, um, I, I kind of took a, a safety, uh, my, my safety of margin here was, I'm gonna go back to school because at the same time is, I don't know what happens with software. My thinking at the time was, if I'm gonna build a software, I'll learn a lot that I think will implement in anything. Even if I get a normal job, I think it would all kind of come in. Mm -hmm. So I actually did school and the software company. And then at the same time, during all of that, of course, I got married and had a kid. So I was busy with just a lot of things. Uh, but it really was getting my master's uh, in business, getting an MBA. That's when the software company just couldn't, you know, mm. <laughs> It just couldn't take off. I would get users, but it was nothing significant. And I didn't really intend to stop making it. Mm. I still love the project, but I just had made a decision. Once Joker Greeting launched, and we can talk about that, mm. it was just a decision of like, well, this Joker Greeting brand is working. <laughs> so I keep making a software that I'm grinding on, spending money on, and sure, potentially could be much bigger. Or do I work on something that I know people like today? And that's what I want. So, so how, like this Joker greeting does have some technology inside it or some sort of a yeah. mechanism to get it going. Yeah. Uh, can you share a little bit, like how did you first test this idea out and, and yeah. how did you get yeah. it made? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I might as well show a product real quick, Okay. right? It's not really a shameless plug, but everything is a plug when you're in business. So it, all it is, is a greeting card, right? And things, the funny thing is, is today versus I, this is this, um, the card I launched, the company technically launched April 1st, 2015. So uh, we did a Kickstarter. I'll get, you know, we can talk about all that, but I know what you're, I'm going to answer your question. Um, things have changed. So this, even though I'm showing a card right now, mm -hmm. um, throughout the seven years that I've been in business, internals have changed, uh, designs have changed. But in, anyway, the point is, is right now, if you open the card, mm -hmm. okay, it'll play music, nothing magical, mm -hmm. very normal. But the point is, is what we did yeah. is there's a safety tab that we've now shifted to the outside. So you can sign the card. Once you pull the tab out of the card mm. and then you open it, it will play nonstop. So mm. the joke here is that most people, you know, are used to buying musical cards or musical gifts and they stop. But I don't think anybody ever wants that music to keep going. Mm -hmm. And so the joke is that we just kind of took off the off switch. There is no off switch. Mm -hmm. And it now will repeat until the battery dies. So most of these cards, uh, they'll go for at least three hours and we've had cards go for 10 hours, just nonstop. But, <laughs> um, and, and I'll say this one more thing is, uh, we. so think about it. If it's gonna go three hours, you can break the card, right? Okay. You can rip it in half. Yeah. And so what we did, and this also really helped us is we just hid glitter inside mm -hmm. the card. So mm -hmm. you probably mm -hmm. can't hear it, but inside is glitter. So if you actually break it, there's glitter. So it's kind of like this really funny, and it's glitter you can clean up. It's not um, tiny sand glitter. It's kind of almost confetti-ish. Mm. Uh, but you can vacuum and it's not a, a crazy deal. But getting to that point of like, how did I get around to this? I was looking for, um, I mean, I guess, what do you do like with anything that you don't know? You're like, 
what Google. So I just mm. Googled stuff. I think I started, I, don't, I won't even remember. We're talking 2014 when I was talking to people, you know, who can make it, can, you know, can it be done? It's, it's a silly, simple idea, but I've learned that even though it's simple, some people just don't, it's like we have a pro, like some people have a process built and they don't want to change it. Mm. And I've seen that with um, a lot of, you know, a lot of ideas that I think are simple, but people just aren't able to make those little changes because a little, little thing to me is a big thing to them. Um, I don't, I, I'm sure I had people say no to me along the way, but the funniest thing about all of this, and I've never been there before, I was in LinkedIn and I think there was like um, a user, like a group, you know, Facebook has groups. Um, I think LinkedIn had like a group. Mm. And I don't, I think it was just called the greeting card association group. I'm just making this up because it's been about eight <laughs> years now. And I swear all I did, I went into the group and I, I think I just asked, does anyone here know how to make a musical greeting card? Hmm. And someone just, um, you know, replied, said, Hey, talk to me. I can, let's see if we can work together. So all I did was I, you know, there's a leap of faith here because of course I can be, uh, I can ask people kind of what I'm looking for you know everyone's trying to be careful with like their new big idea so once he replied to me um I just told him like can you make a card okay you can make a greeting card great a musical greeting card great but can you play you know can we make it so it doesn't stop mm. and most people didn't understand why they're like it really didn't make sense <laughs> to them and even today it's, you know not everybody's gonna buy it it's fine mm. and <clears throat> he just said I think we can do it and so I think like the, the sample cost was, I don't know, a few hundred dollars. I, something, maybe it was like even a thousand dollars. I don't even remember. For, for, remember one, for one card? It was like for three cards, it was okay. like a couple hundred dollars, probably. Okay. Okay. Right. So okay. it was like for three or five cards, just for samples. Right. And that I think may have even included shipping. Um, because what it really took was them taking an engineer, which I get an engineer kind of fiddling for a couple hours that's really what I was paying for you know it's not material it's time mm -hmm. so I, whatever I paid a couple hundred dollars I got the card I tested it and again it was like it was really good mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> actually I'm sure I have like a one of my older cards uh somewhere but I, I don't even need to get it so that's really that was the process and of course the next question was you know how if i buy a hundred how much does that cost but by a thousand you know what does that cost so it's kind of just learning if they can scale if they can do it and um that just led me to once we had the sample in hand it was just a matter of let's make a kickstarter and that was kind of the, the next step okay so you didn't you didn't try to sell it uh you basically went directly to kickstarter right Okay. It was 100% planned to go to Kickstarter. I didn't have any plans to, um, cause like I said, I wasn't trying to make a company. Mm. Um, but the fact is, is I don't know if, you, you know, this is, it's kind of like a, a known story now, but if you recall the founders of Airbnb, yeah. if you ever look at their story, they, they always had like the story and this was known, you know, when I was making what I was doing they built airbnb but they were running out of money and i think they did like cereal boxes mm, yeah, yeah. for obama. obama obama campaign yeah right it's a well-known story and honestly that's kind of what i was thinking here i'm like i'll just make some extra money 10 grand 20 grand mm. you know if it works out well and then i'm done so mm. i didn't have like i didn't plan to go to any retail company I didn't plan to do any of that it's just like i'll do a kickstarter make some extra money it'll keep me making my software company mm. that's what i want to do Hmm. And so that was really the plan. It was just like a bit of side cash and I'd be done with it. And, and to your surprise, Kickstarter really, really kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there's, uh, it wasn't. And so I don't want to say that it wasn't planned because once we decided, uh, when I say we, uh, ultimately it was my brother hmm. and I who got all of this started. Granted, you know, I'm the one <laughs> who found the manufacturer I'm the one who kind of got the artwork and I really did all the back end. And uh, if you watch the videos, I'm the one in the videos. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time is uh, he is a videographer. Um, he had used Kickstarter already uh, a couple of times. Uh, I think I forget what he raised like 10 grand or something for a couple of videos that he did. So he was a bit more familiar with Kickstarter. Yeah. And so I went up to his house. We made a video of the product. Uh, we shot it in like an hour. 
Uh, luckily, he is a professional. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. We shot it. He, he went to his office. He made some edits, and then he sent me the video. We posted it on Kickstarter. And like I said, we planned to post it. I think originally we were looking at like February, but it just kept getting pushed, uh, you know, as things go along. And then it, um, I don't know, you're in Canada, right? Oh, yeah. Totally. Correct. I have no idea if Canada celebrates or has an April Fool's Day. They, they do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think April Fool's is pretty, pretty uh, global. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, it's, it's different. Um, so what happened was, um, we just decided we would launch on April 1st mm. because it's April Fool's Day. We're making like a prank card. It just kind of made sense. So uh, it gave us a bit of extra time. So we just prepared a little bit better uh, with the video and, and everything. And that was, that was, I'll say that's it, but you know, it still took a good six months of just getting the products ready. I, I had, I think a few thousand in my garage just in case so I could, you know, send them, you know, it was just kind of, I was prepared for something. Um, but I thought I would sell maximum a thousand cards. So we, we actually launched the Kickstarter on April 1st. This mm -hmm. is 2015. The reality is, <laughs> I don't think people realize that we were a real company mm -hmm. because there's so many, there are so many like fake product releases on April Fool's Day, mm -hmm. um, especially that I think Microsoft and all these other companies have done like fake launches, especially I think uh, Amazon has done them before. So when we launched on that day, I think we did, I don't know, $50 or something. Mm. So it wasn't, it was okay. not successful. And we were kind of sad, uh, of course. We're like, well, okay. And I, at that same time as I kept, you know, reaching out or trying to do something, it wasn't until day two when a company noticed us and we were still around, you know, it, the joke, with the, it, you know, the campaign wasn't a joke. It was real. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, you know, I'll give them a shout out. They were probably the first company to recognize us. It's a website called um, dudeiwantthat.com. Okay. Right. It, they're a relatively small company, yeah. but they actually highlighted us. And I think that was really what triggered, uh, helped. Hmm. And then all of a sudden we did like a thousand dollars. Right. And so we're like, fantastic. And, um, you know, long story short, once they picked us up, it was, I, mean, I won't remember the order, but it was like, dude, I want that to another website, to another website. Then all of a sudden it was ABC News and then it was Gizmodo. And then <laughs> um, it was BuzzFeed. We actually trended on BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed, I don't know if they have it today, but they had like a top 20 trending. We were, mm. I think 17, maybe 13. I don't remember at the time. So, you know, that was like a day when we did like $10,000 in a day. Mm. And uh, we were literally, it was so crazy because in the first week, everything kind of exploded. And we actually had phone calls with Good Morning America. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so we actually had a date set. And um, I think it was just going to be a phone call we were going to dial in. I don't remember if there was a lot of specifics around it yet. But of course, the day the, the day came and Good Morning America said, oh, you know what, something happened, maybe tomorrow. And then once the next day happened, we never heard back from them. So Good Morning America never happened. But it you know, I wasn't that depressed. We ended up doing $92,000 in, in those 30 days. And we had no ad campaign. We didn't, you know, there was no like um, magic button here, except for we just made something that people wanted to talk about and share. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I was working on a software that I had spent, you know, a lot of time trying to make. And I think I had, yeah, I don't know, 50 users. <laughs> Um, and then all of a sudden I made this and it was instantly people wanted mm. to talk about it, share it, buy it. It made sense. And it was a $15 card. And I, I think today my, my card is cheaper. So mm. I priced them cheaper, but yeah, I had people spending, you know, $150 on 10 cards and, you know, surprised me. So that was, you know, just to be clear, there was no corporation, nothing mm. was incorporated. There was no bank. There was, mm -hmm. there was nothing truly it wasn't built the company until about 15 days in, I recognized it was doing well. I started to set that up, but yeah, it took me about 30 days to kind of get all those pieces in uh, incorporated bank set up, et cetera. And then I just made the, you know, the decision of like, I guess this is what I'm going to try. And, you know, deep down, I just felt, um, 
I had to, even if I didn't think it would last. Truthfully, I was like, okay, maybe I have another year, but I ca- I just felt that I had to kind of keep running with it. And so I, that's what I did. I, just, I um, had to turn off the software company. I lost a lot of money on it. And then I just changed it all towards this. Cool. So, um, I mean, this, this is really a unique product. Uh, when you started it, did you like was there any other of course you know musical greeting cards is one thing but you have this is kind of a little bit of a different idea yeah. uh, did you have any competitors who are doing the exact same thing at that time and do you have anyone who's doing it now like do you have real competitors now um the funny thing is is um just before like <laughs> i mean even uh the idea of what we had i think we technically thought of around 2013 but as you know it's like one of those ideas that comes to you and you're like ah maybe it's funny but you know and i i was kind of I, i'm still i still do this to today is i'll write down hmm. ideas and that's I, I like to write things down i have a whiteboard there some of them are those or on my on my um my phone i write down ideas and i i just feel like if it comes back to me and i keep thinking about it um I'll push it forward. And this was one of them. And so I, I actually specifically, what was so funny, I think it was in January, another company launched. It wasn't, it wasn't nearly what we were doing, it, you know, an endless musical greeting card, but they had like glitter in an envelope and they made um, a website. You can look it up, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but they basically, it was something that kind of like went boom Hmm. And then the guy sold the company for a hundred thousand dollars and he sold it in like 30 days and he walked okay. away. From it. So that's happened first. And I was like, wow, like I, I kind of saw them as a competitor very, very indirectly. Fast forward to today. Um, yeah. The only, I have competitors. Um, one of them uh, was a vendor, long story short. Um, he's now, um, <laughs> uh, he's now, I have a patent on my card, so I actually get a royalty from okay. those cards. Okay. Uh, of the people that have really copied me, most of them uh, I've been able to kind of suppress. And why I say suppress, I just feel like they literally copied like my product uh, image and artwork. And so I can find ways to kind of like have YouTube help me. Uh, but for the most part, not there's not a lot of competitors coming at me. There's a, there's a big reason. I mean, I guess like, Hallmark could copy me 100%, but I don't think they want to get into the glitter business Mm. type of thing. It's a little Mm. bit pranky, maybe too pranky for them. Mm. And I'm doing well, but at the same time is I'm not making a hundred million dollars. So for anyone to really come into my space and challenge me, Mm -hmm. it's not like a billion dollar space where anyone can coexist. I, I actually think, I know of one very particular company that came in, they tried and then they just stopped. Hmm. Um, I know of actually, and actually one more company that tried and nothing ever came of them because uh, it's hard. I mean, I think I've been very lucky. When, when Kickstarter helped me, if you like look up endless greeting cards, um, they either have to kind of outspend me or something else but at this point my brand is known after seven years uh but who knows maybe someone will i'm always the reality is is i'm always trying to improve my product and i will say this is i like when i i i've tried other manufacturers and try to second source and um i've actually i think i've been very lucky with my current manufacturer I'm sure some people can do as well out there. I haven't found them. I'm sure it can happen. But what I'm trying to get at is I have learned like as simple as the product is making one that is consistently good that um, isn't always that easy. Quality quality matters. It's not just a piece of crap. Yeah. We have we try to I think we've set the bar high. We've made some certain things here um, that I think are doing well. But I, like I said, I, I do have a patent around the idea that has helped me already so you know i try to defend myself how i can cool um the price point of your product i, I believe it's 8.99 per card right which is a which i think is a really good price point because if, even if you go to buy like any um, i'm here 
a reg year. regular card, which is like Hallmark or a brand name card. I mean, yeah. they're, they're usually pretty expensive. Um, so uh, my question would be, how have you managed to keep your price point low and still, um, I'm assuming you have a decent margin on the product. So is it like getting manufactured in China or is it uh, um, yeah. where, where you're able to control the cost a little bit more? Yeah, uh, I guess I'll be very clear. Um, I have, at this point, I have more than one product line. I have okay. four technically and another one coming, but I have a different product. This product is $8.99. Okay. This is not a greeting card. This is actually more in the prank realm, right? So these are like called crickets. Mm. And this one has like a little sticky on the back, but the whole point is yeah. <laughs> it will play like a random cricket noise. You can hide this somewhere. You just take it and you can put it on a fan on top mm. of a fan and it will play a random cricket noise. Um, out, that, you know, and that, right? that is also nonstop or? It's nonstop in the essence that it's intermittent. So this one, okay. because of how it's intermittent, like it'll chirp, 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 be silent. And then three minutes later, chirp, 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 okay. or meow, 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 or whatever it is. So these ones will last um, sometimes up to like 24 hours. Hmm. And um, these ones are $8.99 because I've just, anyway, long I can explain that. But this one's $8.99. For the greeting cards, I usually price them. There's a kind of a difference. They're between $9.99 and $11.99. Okay. There's licensing fees and other issues, but I still think it's fair. And I know what you're asking. Uh, I'll, I'll, let me get to the short answer. Are they manufactured in China? Yes. I've, I've tried USA. I've tried uh, Canada. I've tried a lot of countries. Um, but yeah, it's, they're definitely now made in China. I technically probably should charge more, but at the same time is, I still like the price. The reality is, is I have to charge shipping. Hmm. So there's yes. always going to be a shipping price on top of it that I don't pay for. Uh, most customers don't buy one card. They like to buy multiple cards. Um, so that's kind of where I go for is more of that bundle price anyway. And so if they're going to buy two cards and then we're talking at least over $20, uh, et cetera. So that's kind of more, that's how I've, in terms of business uh, management, uh, I've chosen to not sell one card, but a few cards to them. Uh, I think if they buy two cards, even if, even if I lose a dollar or whatever it is, you know, and there's other things I do lose money in other ways. Mm -hmm. I do it with purpose because um, I see it all as marketing as well. They have to give the card to someone mm. um, specifically. So if I can get more products out there, gets the brand out there. Um, and uh, anyway, that's kind of how I've done it. I believe personally, I'm, I believe in volume. So I, mm. I'd, I'd rather get volume than just high margin. That's my basic idea. So that's very interesting. There's, there's a referral kind of built into the product. Like it's not just one person, they have to give it to someone. So they will now know about it and they will be excited about it and they're going to probably purchase it. Uh, is there like, do you have a, a defined target market or is it like all over the place? Is it mostly like young people or? Uh... No, yeah, I, everyone has the, even me, like um, the initial thought is that it's for like college kids. But it's not. Like I said, that's why it's not really a prank card. It's just a funny card. Mm -hmm. And I mean that by if you've ever purchased a greeting card or you watch people buy a greeting card, they're always looking for the one that gets a reaction. So you'll go through it, you'll open the card and it'll have like a dude on there in a thong. You're like, no, not that one. And so <clears throat> you'll go through these cards. You want one that's funny that gets a reaction unless of course it's you know, supposed to be sad or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that being said is my audience probably skews female. The, the age is probably 30 to 55, mm -hmm. like larger in terms of just like uh, that realm. And I've, I kid you not, like, I like, this is like, I had a, <laughs> look, I, I really try to do a lot of customer service. I think I'm probably unique that I probably do too much customer service mm -hmm. personally. Mm -hmm but I don't pick up the phone like rarely. And it's mm. not because I don't like it. It's because it's limiting. Mm. I can do, I can talk to 10 people on an email or a chat versus one phone call. 
And anyway, so I had this one person call me and I had like three voicemails and I was like, oh, maybe they're mad at me. <laughs> but I had, I'm like, okay, so I listened to the voicemail. I don't know how old she was. I, I'm just gonna say she was 70. She was probably a little bit older. But she was. She sent me three voicemails saying, I need help buying cards because I want to give some of these to my friend mm. and I want to give some to my grandson. Mm. But I'm having a hard time, you know, making the purchase. Mm. So I was like, all right. So I called her back and she bought like five cards and she gave it to her friend. Um, she lived in a, a nursing home. This was just last year. Mm -hmm. And so I think our friend was like, you know, her next door neighbor at the nursing home or something. And then she sent a card to her son. So I think she ended up buying like eight or 10 cards. But that's what I mean. It's uh, I've seen grandmas give it to grandsons, grandsons give it to grandmas and every, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, doesn't matter the, the, the area. I've just seen it all. Um, the only slightly difference is this one is a bit more of like an office prank. Hmm. Um, but I've seen fire, like firefighters and police officers love these. They, um, there's, um, so th that one has a bit more of like a niche of like who, mm -hmm. uh, I would say this one does a bit more like office related pranks. And I think industry wise, it, oddly enough, firefighters, police fighter, uh, policemen, uh, ambulance drivers, like they have a really a different humor amongst them. <laughs> um, and where honestly warehouse employees, mm. <laughs> you know it, anyway so there's that kind of thing. but so um the, i don't have a single demographic it's it's very wide much wider than i would have thought have you ever tried um the personalization idea where someone could come make the purchase but they're not sending it to themselves they're sending it to uh, their friend and basically they'll they'll give you the information what they want written maybe you're going to write it or you know uh and and then you basically send it out to so it's not going to be you know your next door neighbor or your friend but they can send it out all over the country or something yes um so the question is how to implement it right and i chose to actually build a different website okay my company right my main company is jokergreeting.com mm -hmm. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I decided to really focus on um, selling, you know, bundles or groups. And that's because I have four products. And, you know, a lot of people are that way. Like they'll come buy a greeting card and, you know, they want a candle and they want one of my office pranks or they, they just kind of want separate things. And I have like wrapping paper as well. They'll buy a bunch of these things. Um, or they'll buy, you know, 10 Christmas cards. Very, very normal. But at the same time is it never made sense to me from a consumer's um, viewpoint. If I start adding in like more buttons and features, I was always worried that it would just make it more difficult for them mm -hmm. to, oh, I just want to select one product and then add a message. And so for me, the user experience actually didn't feel mm -hmm. um, comfortable just to, you know, I don't like a lot of buttons, right? Mm -hmm. That's just me. I think. You know, I don't know. I guess that's why I, I know some people don't like Apple because it removes functions from you. <clears throat> but that's kind of how I believe that's one of, you know, my core ideas um, is just keep it simple. And okay. I, instead of building in all those features, I just, you know, if you're on my product page, I just have a little statement that says, if you want to send this to someone else, we have a whole other website for you. Okay. So they go to the website and it really does make it, it makes a big difference because now that I have another website called uh, Ship Joker, okay. uh, so if they go to shipjoker.com and I, you know, I just advertise it from my site, from my website. Um, that way it's a whole different experience because then they can select the date, they can write a message. We, okay. you know, we do it all for you. They can only pick one card. And importantly, when we ship a product, it doesn't say from Joker greeting. Mm. It, um, it actually, we just made up a name, <laughs> okay. right? And so it, it's basically much more anonymous. Um, and so they can't just Google, it's called like forever gifts. It means nothing, okay. <laughs> right? It go so if they get the package, they won't know what it is. That's another reason why I felt I needed a whole other website because in order to do it properly, mm -hmm. um, that's what I did. So yeah, it, it's, 
you know, oddly enough, I'm, maybe if I marketed it more, it's kind of been one of those areas where I've been building slowly mm-hmm. and I now have an employee focused on it um, and it's growing. It's not my main focus, but I, I like it. I, I'm starting to give it more time and attention. Um, but yes, uh, I, you know, you have to do it today. How many employees do you have? Do, what, do, how, what, what does your team look like? Do you one? I have one employee. That's a full-time employee, but how I, so that what that means is um, I'm a full-time employee. I've hired a full-time employee now. And, but I, you know, the biggest job here is um, fulfillment. Okay. And, <laughs> and that uh, is in-house, I'm assuming, yeah. I know, I no, used to do it in-house, there's okay. too many. So okay. I used to, like when I used to, for the first six or eight months, I was like, let me see how this goes. Hmm. And then, um, you know, I'd have like a hundred orders on the weekend and I'd be busy like boxing and boxing and boxing and shipping. I couldn't get it. Like it was, it was possible, but then I couldn't do my, the rest of my job. And then I figured, okay, let me hire people. And then I would hire people, you know, mostly part-time just to see, but it was just, um, it was never really worth it. People wouldn't come. It was kind of a pain. And so that was just another decision. Do I want to do this myself? Or do I want to put it? So I work with a partner, shipping partner. Uh, I have for six years now. Um, I think it's for for me. I know other people will disagree for their own reasons, but for me, it was um, you know the best decision for what I do. It allows me to focus on what I do well. Uh, it allows them to focus on what they do well. Do you do you ship uh, internationally? Do you ship in other countries? The only, just to be clear, the only thing we do ourselves is from Ship Joker when we handwrite notes, that comes from us directly. Okay. So that's the only thing that's in house. Um, and I have like a, a part time employee. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll ship anywhere from our warehouse is in Pennsylvania. Okay. When, when, um, just out of curiosity, when, when you're shipping internationally, are you char- charging in US dollars or are you charging in uh, other currencies? Uh, I think. I mean, the website's built on Shopify. Okay. I think, I think it converts it to their currency. Um, but the hardest thing about that, I mean, it's inter- shipping international. Canada is not so bad, um, but Europe has been horrible. Um, it's the challenges there. It's very, very slow. I've never found a good way to do it. I mean, I I do have um, of when it comes to retailers. Uh, I really like your um, wholesale, like, you know, outside. So I, I do have retailers in like the UK and Netherlands and a few, like even in Paris and Australia. So I do have some partners around much. That's, I think that's great. Um, but shipping directly, it's like I had customers. I have like two, a couple customers in Italy that are, have been waiting six weeks for products. It's pretty slow. So, so the retailers that are international, you basically... They, they purchase wholesale from you and then they would fulfill the order. Yeah. Uh, and and when, when they make the order, like, do you basically just ship directly from China or do you ship it locally? Uh, locally, yeah. Um, I, in fact, you know, it's actually cheaper. I've, I've looked into like keeping a warehouse in China or Hong Kong or somewhere else, but every time I would price it with my, um, you know, UPS or whoever, DHL, didn't matter. If I have to ship from there to the UK, it was always like two to three times more expensive oh. than if I shipped it to me and then to the UK. Well, why? No, no, I don't, I'm just saying, I don't know. I'm just saying, wow. <laughs> no, I know. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying it myself. Like it always like, it blew my mind. I, I remember all the time I'd be like, why is it so expensive to do that? Cause it, it would be, I, know, I would love to kind of like hold inventory um elsewhere but it's always been cheaper to ship to myself first um social media um do you do you get a lot of sales through social media i did i did read somewhere that you had good success from tiktok could you share a little bit you know which which social media works great for you and uh, yeah what has been your experience with tiktok tiktok seems to like some people get to seem seem to get a lot of success through there but for others it, it doesn't work so how, yeah. how yeah what is your experience um so the short answer of tiktok i also I guess i'll say that first um i had a phone call today i have like um i don't know what he's called i should know um i can look him up but 
I have like a TikTok representative okay. now. He, okay. They contacted me and said, hey, you know, can we like give you a representative to help you with your advertisements? So, you know, sure. <clears throat> anyway, we've been, we've been meeting for like two months now. He's, he's great. Uh, today we were talking and he just, you know, and he's been this way since the beginning. He, he can't believe how well I do on TikTok. Hmm. And even today he was like, he's just like, the fact is, as we, you know, we go through the advertising, the fact is your ads do so well. I don't know how to guide you because I, I can't do it better. Hmm. Um, so my success with TikTok is very good. And, um, you know, I can explain what I do and how I got there. Uh, I don't know if the success is because of TikTok, but let me be, I, I mean, the reality is this is I was having success with Facebook before this, but I've tried, you know, Snapchat and t um, Twitter, um, Pinterest, Reddit. I've kind of even Google or whatever, um, you know, so that's been my job. My very specific job um, day to day is I make videos and I manage the social media. That's what I do. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one hundred. I don't that I do not give to anyone else, and because and I, if you if you watch a video, you'll hear my you'll hear my voice, and okay. uh, some videos are just my face. Um, I take all that very seriously because I just don't think anyone else can or knows my product the same way that I do. What about ads? Is that something that you do yourself also, or that one hundred percent? Okay. Okay. Yes, one hundred percent. I do all my I do all of my ads. Like the only thing I don't do is some Google stuff. Um, that's a different reason, but I don't spend a, a, nearly as much money uh, advertising through Google. But there's like some Google stuff that I hired someone else to do um, because it doesn't because it doesn't require um, my front end video stuff. It's a bit more back end uh, stuff that I you know I I don't like doing. Um, in terms of uh, shipping, you said that you charge uh, for shipping. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that um, uh, you've built partnerships with shipping carriers um, mm -hmm. based on volume and things like that. Uh, could you share a little bit about what your experience is like? And uh, because your, your, I mean, your products are usually, I think, um, probably would be easy to ship because they probably go in envelopes or something or... Yeah, I still have to ship it. It's always going to ship as a package okay. um, through, uh, you know, USPS down here, US Postal. Uh, and that's mostly because of how like thick it is. Okay. It's not that thick. Now, I could ship it in an envelope. It could ship that way. The problem is if you ship it as a regular envelope, it goes through processing machines and it can get bent. Okay. Um, so that's why the moment you put any padding, you put bubble wrap around anything or you ship it differently, it ships the package. So it's, it's kind of unfortunate. I'm, it's kind of, this is the next, um, process I'm working on, but oh, that's different. Anyway, it, the price jumps, right? So right now it's, it'll cost me from three to $4 just for shipping. Well, okay. I, know. I wish it were zero. I wish it were a dollar. Um, but that's just not how it works. So, um, I don't, I wish I had like real tips. The fact is, is if you're on Shopify, they usually give you the benefit anyway. Um, I, my shipping partner is the one, like my volume is very good. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it all goes through my shipping partner. They're the ones that, um, you know, work with their shipping label. I don't negotiate any of that. I just kind of don't get involved. I do. And the reality is, is for when I, when it comes down to shipping for me, my decision, um, I, I won't explain you know exactly what's going on here but some of my shipping is i actually um don't charge like all of it and sometimes i do it kind of depends but i kind of help keep the shipping costs low on purpose so i eat some of the cost hmm. um while um sometimes i you know i don't always but anyway there's the whole thing there i don't know if it's that interesting but i sometimes i'll even eat some of that cost because i think it's worth it uh, final question. So um, before we move on to rapid fire round, uh, I'm sure, you know, over the last five, six years that you've been running your business, you have had some failure, mistakes made, 
yeah. uh, lessons learned. Could could you share maybe one or two big things, big failures that you may have encountered throughout the process, and you know what what have you learned? What can other people learn from it? Yeah, I mean the biggest failure I had was, you know, it was funny. I was just speaking out um, really good really good i don't know my manufacturer i really like and about 12 months in uh, i think i placed like it was my, one of my biggest orders from them it was eight thousand cards i get my cards i ship them out i had like um right a retailer in the uk i forget how many they bought like a thousand cards or two thousand cards doesn't matter and i had shipped out you know four thousand cards to customers the fact is um, all of the batteries in those cards um, were defective. And they would the, they were defective to the point where they worked for about three months. Mm. But after three months, they just deteriorated. Mm. And that was, I mean, so basically I was, you know, a year in the business, a little bit more, 16 months. <clears throat> but at the same time was now I was back to zero. Mm. Any dollar that I had made... <laughs> I just, I, so I had to make the decision of, you know, do I keep doing it? You know, can the manufacturer, um, are they actually good? Are they going to, you know, be difficult? Um, you know, the short answer is um, because I had, and, and because I had put all my money in new product, um, I, I think, I don't know how much I had in the bank. I'll make up a number, $10,000 for like the business. Uh, maybe it was like 15 or 20, but it was, I, I just, um, in order to get right, to get fixed again, it was, um, I had to refund everybody. I just had to like, and, and I didn't have to do that. I probably could just could have mm. said, oh, it was a fun experiment. I made 20 grand. I'm done with Joker greeting. Um, it was fun. Mm. Um, but I, I called up my manufacturer and I said, hey, here's the problem. What can you do? And I think ultimately they they basically offered to, fix as many products that I had no that I knew that were broken. I think I got about 50% of them confirmed. Mm -hmm. So they gave me they gave me some free cards left. Um, but it didn't matter once I refunded like all the other customers, um, I was back to zero, literally back mm -hmm. to zero. And all of a sudden I had a I had never I had never taken a loan at that point. Um, but that's when I took my first loan to kind of pay for things. That was Verily, that was probably the most painful because I'm such like an intimate CEO. Hmm. I don't, I don't like that term necessarily. I should say president. It's probably a better term. I'm much more. I'm a very intimate president with my customers. So when they tell me like my card didn't work, the fact is like <laughs> it always hurts me, even hmm. to the even to the, like today. Hmm. And I, you know, I hate it, but I don't care about fixing their problem. Hmm. It's not about refunding them the $15. Of course, you know, I don't want to do that, but it's much more like I did that there's a failure in there and I don't like that. So it was, that was a really depressing time. Um, <laughs> problem number two was um, because I had a shipping partner, um, they shut down. They actually sold themselves to someone else. We're talking 2020, April. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, they sent me an email, said, hey, um, we're done. Someone acquired us. Uh, you can stick, you can stay with them or leave. And anyway, the long story short with that one is I just figured, ah, uh, you know, these people can ship, you know, I'll just stay. I stuck with that company and it was the most horrible experience. And because I, I you know, just to give it numbers here, um, they lost probably over two to 3,000 orders. Hmm orders um over those two or three months that i worked with them wow. and they if i called them to fix it they wouldn't fix it it was such a disaster um that again it was i i just recall that time specifically because i just had like a headache for three months 
um so like and it was probably the long like truthfully it's like it was just a long headache of ever you know, everything was bad at that at that point and 2020 wasn't easy on anyone so i couldn't really you know cry you know to anybody because it was just a terrible year but yeah i just remember that one i, I had vendors i lost some vendors and they didn't want to work with me and it just caused um it just kind of spiraled into a lot of other problems but that one was painful so definitely um i don't i don't know i mean there's probably ways around that but ultimately you know, you're going to have partners really, really uh, mess up. Um, but fortunately, I was able to find someone else and they've been great. Cool, cool. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to the rapid fire okay. round. Where this the is the hard is, part. I'm ready. <laughs> where you have to answer in one or two words or a sentence or so. So the first one is one book that you would recommend to entrepreneurs or business professionals in 2022 and why? The book that I like that is that I um, think about a lot is Shoe Dog by uh, Phil Knight. Yeah, Nike. Okay. Um, Fantastic. An innovative product or idea in the current e-commerce, retail, or tech landscape that you feel excited about. <laughs> I honestly I couldn't come up with a good answer here. I just either I'm too focused on Joker greeting or what? What was the last product that you purchased or or that you really? liked purchasing i just like food yeah okay <laughs> i like food I'm, i i guess i'll put it this way i've never been leading the pack on tech okay. I, like, I love apple if apple comes out with a new product i'll be like eh, i'll wait for the next one so i think that's kind of um baked in i just i'm i just that's how i look at things a business or productivity tool or software that you would recommend or a productivity yeah, that, tool. Okay, this one I can talk about. I'm gonna just pull up my phone. For me, uh, and I'm sure there could be better apps, but I've always used one called Video Shop on my okay. phone. Okay. I like it because it's just, for at least for like, for me, whenever I edit in that application, it's always been really, really good. It's worked out great. And then the other one that I've actually, on top of that one, is called captions. All they do are, all they do are um, text captions, but it's actually really, really smooth. Cool. Um, a startup or business that you think is currently doing great things? Yeah. Did I have an answer for this one? Currently doing great things. Like someone that you look at and think wow they, they really nailed it well i'm on the board of a couple of a couple of companies okay <laughs> <laughs> i can i can talk about them um yeah i guess like i don't know I, this is like one of those questions i feel like i don't have a good answer for okay. again uh maybe i'm too buried in my own work uh, i have kids and i i work i don't know a peer entrepreneur or business person whom you look up to or someone who inspires you Nobody. Nobody. Okay. Nobody. And it's not from an ego. That's not an egotistical answer. I just mean, um, I, you know, on, and I'll, I'll answer it this way. I honestly talk to my customers and mm -hmm. they're the ones that guide me. And if they buy the product, I help them. If they don't buy the product, then I scrap the whole thing and I try something new. Cool. Final one, best business advice you ever received or you would give to other entrepreneurs? This one I had to look up. I thought it was a good question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Taleb. I know it's only supposed to be two words, but it doesn't matter. Um, years ago, I read Anti-Fragile yeah. by Nassim Taleb. You know what? When I was reading that book, I would think I was in my third or fourth year of making Joker Greeting, but this one I always loved. So get this. This is what he says. By definition, what works cannot be irrational. And he says, Failure to realize that if something stupid works and makes money, it cannot be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> therefore, therefore, a Joker greeting company that makes money cannot be stupid. <laughs> do you do you ever think that this was kind of like uh, you got really lucky, like you came, you you thought of an idea and it just worked, and. Uh, and and maybe this is not something that that can be replicated again like you you think of another idea maybe uh, it will be very difficult for it to work 100 um i definitely believe in luck um 
but that's like the important thing when making products you can't i mean like the reality is like there's products you just can't make like my software company it just required too much money and time or whatever but i'm happy i tried it i'm happy i tried it when you're trying to make a business you just have to be willing to try things and once you throw it out there hopefully it didn't cost you too much perfect thank you so much uh, those were all the questions that i had uh, today travis really appreciate your uh, you sharing your story and and sharing a lot of the uh, uh, business advice with us so thank you again uh, for your time um if you want to share um, all the different websites you can share them again and if people want to get in touch uh, what is the best way yeah i mean the only thing i would say is um here i'll do this yeah right jokergreeting.com <laughs> jokergreeting.com you know it's funny um i i run my website this way which is i try to i don't know if this makes sense I like to punch above my weight, mm. right? If you know, if you've ever, um, if you know boxing, yeah, right? Yeah. You, you, you look small, but you can punch really hard. Personally, like whenever people learn like what I do, they all, ha ha, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them how much, like how well I'm doing, which is mm -hmm. now seven mm -hmm. figures. Everyone's blown away. Uh, I don't like to be like super open about that, but I'm just like to say that because you don't have to spend, you know, every dime to like make it big or make, you know, crazy things. You know, I'm super happy with how last year went, you know, we grew 50% last year and in hundred percent in 2020 and this year we'll probably grow another 30 to 50%. So things are going really well. Uh, it's a very silly idea. It's niche, but I also feel very comfortable because Hall, like I said, Hallmark and these other big companies, they're too big for me to come mm -hmm. after me. Maybe they buy me, but that's up to them. Um, but yeah, just kind of like this weird little spot. I think there's a lot of little spots that people are making today. That's why Etsy and Shopify are doing so well. So don't be afraid to kind of make, you know, little things that you like. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Travis. Really, really appreciate your time today.